Break yourself! <laughs> yum, yum, yum. I don't like this one. Yum, yum. This one sucks too. Yum, 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 yum. Ah, just right. I should do next? Perhaps I should start with the champong. Or maybe the chapagetti. Well, hello there. Where did you come from? I must say, this is rather unexpected. Hmm. So, what's your name? What's that you say? Perhaps just your brand or your flavor. Can you, could you do that for me? Well, it's definitely going to be a tough sell if we can't communicate properly. So why don't you come back when I'm ready to eat things I can't read? Oh, shit! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! Ah! Ah! Oh, Jesus! Don't let it get me! Uh, it's gonna be like one of those bad Japanese tentacle porns! Uh. Hello, YouTube. Welcome to another episode of Random Ramen. The ramen show where I somehow justify all the sodium I'm taking in by eating one of these things. So I know what you're thinking. This ramen has a pretty strange name. But I can think of a few others right off the top of my head that are probably a little bit stranger. Oh, jeez, don't I know it. <laughs> Is it just me, or are these ramen starting to sound really judgmental? Hang on, did I see that right? Soup for sl... I need that soup, folks. I need it like I need to turn a trick in a Denny's parking lot for my sugar daddy. Somebody has to get me one of these. Hint, hint, I'd like to do another fan package if at all possible. This time, the ramen really is random. This is a very curious case indeed. Um, this UPC code is linked to several other kinds of ramen uh, that I guess are produced by this company. Uh, but I did, thankfully, get a good friend to uh, call his wife in Japan and get a little translation for all of this. It turns out that we have a character here in the middle that is going to describe what this bowl ramen is in a more common language, and then for the people who have uh, higher schooling or more refined uh, literary knowledge, um, these kanji over here uh, make it a little bit more specific. So, I hastily wrote it down on the back of an envelope. What this apparently says is, uh, in Japanese, uh, tempura. The middle part says tempura, and the rest of it says uh, tempura soba, bonito, and saba soup base. So, there's a lot going on with this one here, even though the only English that's on it is this hastily slapped on sticker with nutrition facts. So for the packaging, I'm going to have to give that a 5 out of 10. It's very cool, very flashy, I like what's going on in it, but it seriously has no English to speak of. Not even the most basic things you need to enjoy this, and it is sold here in America, so... Sorry, you lose on that one. Price on this is going to be 7 out of 10. $1.89 for a uh, packaged item on the go. You can't buy too many bowl ramens for that price, so definitely good on you. And welcome back to our good old friend, the heat applicator. Um, it looks like this particular ramen comes with a couple of really cool things. I don't really know what they are, but we'll go over it real fast. There's your standard seasoning packet and what looks to be some kind of a wafer thing that you put over the top. We broke it since we are throwing this ramen around quite a bit to get that perfect shot in the bathroom. So, let's go ahead and get our water. 
Oh boy. Let's hope it didn't go stale. Oh. Get in there. And here's the unveiling of our uh, tempura soba bonito and sabo soup base. Yeah. Here we go. Ooh. Looks fancy. Looks fancy. Oh my gosh. It really does smell like tempura. <laughs> that is pretty fantastic. Uh, yeah, that that's that's a thing, thing of beauty right there. What is it, Dave? Stop being an a-hole. You just want to get on camera? Uh -huh. yeah, no. Nice cat butt for you guys at home. All right. Now, here is our Japanese tempura soba bonito and saba soup base. Let's see how she flies. First impression on the noodles, you can see that they're uh, a little off brown. Quite a curious color for a noodle, but I hear a lot of the soba noodles are made from buckwheat, so that's probably what I'm looking at. The noodles are uh, unlike anything I've had before. They're more tender than like say your top ramen noodles, those horrible and rich noodles, but they also have kind of a little bit of a grain to them. Something that isn't like just a powdered starch that they would make, you know, other noodle, noodles out of. Uh, you can taste a little bit of a graininess in there. Not quite a graininess, but a little bit of mealy texture. And it's rather nice. Uh, I'm going to give these noodles a 6 out of 10. Uh, definitely, at least on par with one of the better ramens you could get. And on to broth. Broth on this one. It tastes, uh, it does taste a little bit like tempura, like a tempura uh, fish or shrimp. So uh, I would say that seafood is a dominant flavor here, uh, but along with like a soy flavor as well. Broth on this one, I'm also gonna give that a six out of 10. If you like seafood like me, then you're probably gonna love this one. And last but not least, the special features. There was a little disc of tempura that came on the top of this bowl, and you will notice that there are rather large chunks of something that appears to be tempura. Let's see if I can get a good one. <laughs> You're falling apart a little bit. As you would expect, a tempura in submersed in water. So here we go. We got uh, mostly tempura on here with a little bit of noodle. Let's see how she flies. That is curious. It definitely tastes like tempura, but there was something a little crunchy in there. I don't know what that was. Um, it definitely wasn't the tempura itself, because it's, it's gotten a little soggy. I think there might be like little pieces of dehydrated shrimp or something in there. Let's try another little piece. I'm not seeing anything on the on the outside. But there is definitely something in there. When I bite into it, it's a little crunchy. But then I get the flavor of like a tomato. It's very disconcerting. <laughs> like I'm not gonna stop eating it, but uh, I have questions. <laughs> questions that need answers. So, all in all, um, this little surprise package was Pretty cool. Uh, it would be nice if we could get just a little bit of English. Because I've bought a couple other things and they had not a single letter of English on them anywhere. And that's a little bit frustrating. Um, I don't even know what one of them is. Like I think it's sort of a rice porridge thing, but I can't really be sure. So Asian advertisers, if you're watching my stupid little show, please put some small amount of instructions or perhaps a website that we could go to to enjoy your product because they are fantastic um, and I'm hungry <laughs> just give me the conduit so that I can make that happen so that I can put this in here you should probably be seeing the ratings uh, up on the screen around here sometime and uh, that will let you know pretty much where this one stands uh, it's gonna be a middle-of-the-road one for me uh, even though it's a bull ramen um, it it does please in a lot of ways, but if you're not into this kind of thing, it could definitely set you off in the wrong way. 
Thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Random Ramen. I will see you next time. Let's, let's do it just to where it gets in frame and worry about how it's thrown later. And stand closer. Why are you so far away? Because I wanted it to get some velocity. You're going in the outtakes, buddy. <laughs> and go. <laughs> we have to teach you how to throw things.